Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are gonna be comparing the least expensive guitar with the most expensive guitar we have in the shop at this very moment. That is the Guild Bob Marley model compared to a Martin 1937 D28 Authentic. This is gonna be a very interesting deal. We're gonna discuss who this is for, what kind of players looking for either one of these guitars, the specs of them. We're gonna compare the sound between the two. We're gonna do all that coming up here very shortly. It's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. Hey guys, welcome back. Like John said, we are going to be doing a very special extreme comparison from the least expensive guitar we have in the shop currently extreme. to the most expensive guitar that is in our store right at this moment that we made the video. But like all of our videos, if you haven't already done so, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to skip ahead to the, uh, the tone samples at the end, they are at the end of the video. We have some links in the uh, description below. And if you want to hear that entire song, called That's All Right Mama. It was definitely It was not all right. All but right. we have a full video Just of that also linked in the description. You can check right. that out. It was okay. That's okay, <laughs> Mama. Anyway, uh, John, this is one of those things that let's take everything to the extreme. If you want a real comparison, Somebody that's just getting into the guitar market, this is, we did a review on this guitar. We yeah. were very surprised with the quality of the build, the tone, playability of the Guild Bob Marley entry level guitar. Yeah. Let's go a little bit into the specs this of this guitar. This was kind of a, a unique uh, idea. This is based on a guitar that Guild uh, built quite a few years ago uh, that Bob Marley wrote a lot of songs on. And it's, in this case, it's gonna be a laminate back and sides, uh, solid top model, does come with a gig bag. Uh, it is kind of a, a unique deal and under $400, Pretty easy, easy to kind of go at. So this is definitely a rooted in a beginner uh, player. That said, there's some cool extras here. If you're also a Bob Marley fan, they got some posters and, and the gig bag has, gig the, lion bag has the lion. Yeah, and all the, the stuff picks. that you know, kind of brings back uh, a little bit of that Bob Marley flavor. Now, the opposite end of that, we have the 1937 D28 Authentic with VTS. And so that guitar. It's a used guitar that we have in store on consignment right now. Mm -hmm. A killer guitar. We've done, uh, did another Madagascar Rosewood review where this popped up in that. Um, but the most extreme expensive guitar compared to that right now in the stock in the shop We have had more expensive ones, but we thought this would be a fun little comparison. Well, how big a difference is there? This begs the, que that begs the question. Why are we doing this at all? Um, and and this is a funny thing. It shows up from time to time in our comment section I can't hear the difference. I'm pretty sure at my level. I cannot hear a difference between these guitars So we decided let's put that to the test. Can you actually hear a difference in these guitars? I sure hope so. <laughs> I, I think Martin hopes so. Um, so there is who these are for. Like the, the entry level guitar, the, we've talked about this before. We're kind of in the golden age of guitar options out there, really. For somebody who just want a complete beginner guitar, there are some duds. And we did the best uh, guitars under $500, according to the internet video. According to the Googles. We had a few duds show up in there, but we also had some surprise, some surprise guitars show up. Um, this wasn't in that list because it wasn't listed as one of the top guitars on the internet. But, but this it one, would have put in our list. Yeah, I was it, actually there are some really good options out there for under four hundred dollars. You can get some pretty good playing uh, and sounding guitars, and this actually is one of those. It is meant for the beginner or, like you said, a Bob Marley fan. But it's built to be in that price range where you can get a gig bag and a solid top with it. The the big thing is setup and playability. You want to, if you're starting out as a musician, you want something that's not going to be too difficult to play on. Um, you want something that's going to be easier on your fingers, but still get a tone and not buzz and have decent tone anyway. Uh, when you're first playing out, you're probably not really as worried about tone as you are just getting your fingers to hit the right notes. But that's really gonna help you get along and progress as a musician. So that's kind of what this was designed for. Yeah, and this guitar definitely fits that build. It is a laminate sides and back, solid spruce top. We do not recommend going with anything less than that. And I remember when I ordered these guitars, you guys all was like, oh no, here we go. Um, but this was a huge surprise for all of us when we did our first review. This guitar turned out a whole lot better than what we expected for a you know three hundred dollar uh, or sorry four hundred dollar uh, guitar. This really kind of put us absolutely in a really cool spot. It does sound well. It plays pretty darn well. Strum I will, on it a little bit. Uh, yeah, just kinda... you get you can. It 
all plays in tune. It all, you know, has some low end, some richness to it. Um, it is not a premium sounding guitar. But I, I, I barely remember when I was probably about seven or eight at school, they had an after school guitar program and we had a pretty inexpensive junker guitar. So what the options I had to learn on as a, a brand new student, even what, 25 years ago, compared to what you can get now in the same oh, yeah. price range is just uh, night and day. This is a really good entry level instrument that's not gonna hold you back to learn how to play the guitar and to actually start to build an appreciation for the difference in a the tone that you're getting out of that versus something like this, which obviously this is meant for a serious musician or collector, somebody that really knows the difference between a, the build quality. And this one is also kind of Martin's uh, throwback to their most desirable guitar their era. golden era that they would talk, talk about, absolutely. This one does have a few changes, obviously from the original 1937, in that it is not made of Brazilian rosewood. Brazilian rosewood became a uh, illegal uh, uh, harvested wood uh, in the time period between 19... 37 and now, and uh, so now they come up with a what they deemed at the time to be the closest replica, which would be Madagascar Rosewood, again, Adirondack Spruce Top, and this one has the VTS tone treatment or torification that is already uh, done into it as well. So, pretty it cool. It does design. have the, the slot through saddle just like the original did. Mm -hmm. um, forward shifted bracing, yep, like Scalp the original. Um, obviously, all solid with guitar. Price range is extremely different, but even in Martin's case, you know, this is one of their top of the line uh, guitars because it was that limited uh, throwback to their, their golden era yeah. of building guitars. Yep. So, total extremes. This one's meant for either the collector that has just got some money and they love the finest quality. I mean, if you've got a Lexus and you're driving around, you know, the top of the line car, you've got a beautiful house and you've got got some extra money, you're going to want like the top of the line guitar that everyone's going to want to play when they come over to your house or a serious musician that just wants a really good sounding. Uh, we did a comparison with this guitar. It's, it's a great sounding guitar, well built, great tone, easy playability. Mm -hmm. So let's get to the specs on this guitar right here. This is the Guild A20 or Bob Marley guitar. Uh, this is a guitar that has a list price of $555 is a dreadnought, but you can find this street price closer to around $399. Uh, does come with a gig bag. It is a solid spruce top with a laminate mahogany back and sides. It does have black bind binding with a bridge and fretboard material made of pal ferro. Uh, does have a truss rod, a two-way truss rod, which is really so nice, nice especially that price. That price uh, you do have a bone nut and saddle <laughs> with the open gear tuner, small buttons on here. It does have scalloped X brace, which is kind of surprising for a guitar that at might this be price. Also good. Uh, and then it does have a satin uh, poly finish on here as well. I know that's that brings down the price a bit. Absolutely. It is a, uh, a C-shaped neck and puts you in the inch and three quarter nut width uh, and then the 25 and a half inch scale, standard for dreadnoughts. Uh, so definitely just as kind of to stay straight down the road, does have the extras of being Marley-esque. No which, pickup installed, they're just standard acoustic guitar. Nope, this is it. It's just a straight ahead, affordable acoustic dreadnought uh, to be out there. So. All right, that brings us to this guitar, which is the Martin 1937 D28 Authentic VTS. Um, again, this is a really cool guitar, patterned after the 1937 D28, one of the most popular guitars ever built by Martin. If you ever get a chance to get one of those, you should get put your hands on it and uh, take it home take, with you. Yeah, so anyway, price point on this guitar, right at $8,000. It is a dreadnought guitar. Uh, top wood on this is going to be a Adirondack spruce top with the VTS, also known by everybody else as Torfide or uh, a Thermo Cure, depending on who else you want to talk H -tone. to. But it is their version of doing a torfication uh, and tone matching uh, for their guitars. Uh, Madagascar Rosewood on this particular model, although uh, lately have moved on to Guatemalan. A Guatemalan, that's right, Guatemalan Rosewood. See, you failed me out already right there. Uh, mahogany neck as well with a head plate that matches uh, the uh, Madagascar rosewood back and sides. Really kind of cool. Does have the ivroid binding with the herringbone uh, to go along with it. It is a solid ebony bridge uh, and fretboard, uh, bringing back again that the 1937 slot on that. Yeah, style. Does have a slot through saddle, which is really, really cool. Uh, bone nut, truss rod on this one though, not adjustable, just like the 37. It will have that T-bar in there, which is gaining a little bit of mass and it strengths its own tone as well. Uh, Waverly tuners, uh, open back tuners on here. It does have the hand uh, scalloped 
forward shifted X bracing. So this is going to be again that forward shifted pre war style bracing or pre war style. Uh, deal. Uh, it does have a gloss neck on here, just like the originals did as well. And then, uh, of course, comes with a uh, it's a vintage gloss finish. I'm going to say it's a nitrocellulose lacquer. That's what they've been using for the last I don't know how many years. I would assume they're going to continue to do that until they cannot anymore. Uh, nut width on this inch and three quarters uh, does have that neck profile of the 1937 that's very it has a, a v ish shape to it starts out pretty modest and becomes less Tapers modest larger and larger as it kind of goes a little so, bit like a louisville yeah it gets a little bit a little bit baseball like as it gets up in here again no pickup already installed in this but uh standard dreadnought uh scale length it is you know have 25.4 25.5 it's a little bit shorter than that so there you go. That is the specs of the D28 Authentic 1937 variant. So now that we've gone through the specs, we've talked about who these guitars are for, um, what they're who they're built for, and who might be looking for one. I think probably the next most important thing is to talk about the tone of them, uh, kind of describe what you think. We haven't played that yeah. one. Classic Martin sound, D28, everything you would want out of a D28, HD28 now, but a 37 era. Tons of low end, tons of volume, tons of power. Yeah. It's just... There, there is a no, obviously a noticeable difference between this entry level guitar and that one, just in the development of the tone. Like it's just got a fullness across the, the tonal spectrum. Absolutely, everywhere on the on the fretboard it has a uh, a pop and a balance and a, a roundness. I think you can always make those comparisons with cars where you can get a really inexpensive car to get you from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Even a used car that'll they'll do the job. It's not going to have any of the bells and whistles. It's not going to have the luxury feel to it. It's going to ride like a like a tank and and beat you up going down the road. Or you can get a luxury Lexus that you, you hardly know that you're moving on the road. It's just kind of gliding. And that's kind of the difference in this playability-wise and tone-wise. You're getting kind of this, this luxury experience with a build like that. And the time put into it, just like the difference in those two cars, uh, they put a lot of time into the build of these to get them up to that level and that standard, which is also how they justify the price difference. It takes a lot of hours for them that they're paying all their different luthiers and the wood cost of the wood is going to oh, be yeah. extremely different than this one just um, in the time and efforts like you said doing stuff like uh the uh hide glue uh, on this this they had to when martin decided to redo this guitar they had to actually build a new room that was a little more climate and uh humidity controlled because this stuff is pretty volatile unlike modern glues which work a whole lot better than than hide glue they are more subject to temperatures and it you know a, a couple degrees difference in in the room that they're even being laid in makes a difference of how they cure and how they work together so it's it, it definitely had to be a lot more time and with the authentic even farther than that they had to go find other authentics measure them and really compare make a lot of notes on what they were going to do to basically replicate that in this different series of authentic years and so that's you know more cost involved in just the research and development on that. For those people looking for the uh, the they have the the funds to do it, this is a great option for it. I think probably the next best thing that we can do is play both of them back to back, let people hear how they sound uh, without any of our talking in between to really compare them to, and then afterwards you can kind of describe your feel uh, and your own opinion as well.
right, John, that was a great comparison. We got to play, hear the tone back to back. What are your impressions? They sound and play exactly the same. That's not true. They, they sound and play <laughs> completely different. And there, there's, there is so many differences in these guitars. And, it, you know, those of us that are in the room, you can feel it. It's not even just what uh, me as the player can. It, it just, there. it's a different level of guitar. And, again, there's nothing wrong with the fact that there are differences of, if, of levels. If Martin could build that guitar in this price range, I'm sure they would do it, and they would explode over the market. <laughs> it's just really not possible. You, you have to sacrifice a lot of things to get the price down. And tone and, and playability are one of them, but this one does a really good job. I think it totally answers it that for. question. Why does anybody want to spend that much money on a guitar? And the reason is because they have to uh, to get to that level, to get to that uh, quality uh, build and sound. There's only one way to do it. It's going to be with more expensive woods, more time, more energy. It just cannot be done in that price point. So I think out of all of our kind of shootouts, no one would have too much difficulty picking out one of these from the, the other one. You can hear it. You can you can see it. Um, both really cool instruments. Great to have both of them in the shop. It shows that there is an you know a big range of uh, instrument options out there for you, depending on where you are in your musical journey or where you are financially there's a lot of options out there more options probably than there's ever been throughout history so a great time to be a guitar player and a guitar collector yeah um if you kind of like that video and especially if you're new to guitar and you're looking for that first one we scoured the internet and looked for the top 10 recommended guitars according to the internet under 500 dollars and then we did a blind test back to back, gave ratings on all of our favorite ones. It turned out to be a really fun video. It was fun. There were some surprises in there, some really disappointments, some real uh, high points and low points. So I think you guys really like that. It's the top 10 internet, uh, guitars according to the internet, under $500. There's a link there right to it. And we'd love to hear from you guys. If you haven't already done so, please like, subscribe to this channel, share it with other people. It really helps us grow this uh, community that uh, has like-minded lovers of acoustic instruments. And we appreciate you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video.